All right, we already looked at how to create both vertical and horizontal menus using just CSS. Now we're going to go ahead and explore how to create a drop-down based menu system. But we need to build our horizontal menu slightly differently. So as I explained before, there are multiple ways that you can create these horizontal and vertical type menus. The example that I shared with you before is by far one of the easiest ways, and if you just want a straightforward horizontal menu, it works fine and it works great in all the browsers. We're going to go ahead and explore a new way of creating horizontal menu, and then we'll take that file and build upon it to create our drop-down menus. So once again, we're going to be using the exact same file that we used in the last exercise. This is simply a unordered list that is wrapped with a div called nav container around it. The only styles that I've made are I've gone ahead and used the asterisks to remove all padding and border from everything and the body to set my font family to Verdana. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and begin by styling my container that is containing my list. So we'll go ahead and we'll create our styles for this to begin with. I'm going to come up here and we're going to go ahead and set the width. We're going to go ahead and have this div actually um, display. Our buttons are going to display like in a menu bar so this will be a little bit different from what we did before. I'm going to go ahead and set the width of the div to 100% so that makes the div full width of the browser page. We're going to go ahead and we're going to add some borders to our div to make it a little bit um, you know visually more appealing. So I'm going to go ahead and add a border on the top and we will go ahead and set that to solid one pixel and I'm going to go ahead and specify a color to use there. And then let's go ahead and let's do the same thing for the border on the bottom. So I'm just going to copy this declaration and I'll change it to say border bottom instead of border top. We'll go ahead and set the font size and I'm going to use 0.8ms and let's go ahead and set the background color of this and it will probably behoove me to spell this correctly background color and we'll go ahead and set the background color to a light gray and the next thing I'm going to do is just going to create a margin top and the margin top will simply push the div away from the top of the browser and that will just be a little bit more clear for our example that we're working with. So I'll just push it away about 20 pixels. If I save and we refresh the page, you can basically see what's happened on our web page. So it went ahead and it created a background color, it has borders, and of course if I resize my browser window that would just extend and be a hundred percent of the browser page. So that's the first thing that I'm going to go ahead and create right there. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create some styles that are going to affect our unordered list right here. So let's go ahead and let's go about creating those. I'm going to begin by specifying my nav container nav container and we'll open and uh, close the curly braces and then I want to style the UL that is within the nav container and all we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and set the margin to be 0 0 0 for top right and bottom and then it's going to be 30 pixels for the left hand side so this is just going to indent my ul from the edge of the page so if we save and refresh the page you can see that now this is not so close to the edge of the page we'll also see the bullets because now they have room to actually appear the next thing i want to do is i want my elements to align horizontally to each other so we'll go ahead and we'll create a style for that I'm just going to copy this so I can go about creating these things a little bit faster. We'll change this to nav container li and then let's just get rid of this declaration and add a float of left and we're also going to go ahead and let's set the background color I suppose 
Um, let's go ahead and set that as well. And the color that I'm going to be using on my LI is going to be a light um, kind of teal color. And my hex value is 9cc. So if I save and we refresh the page, now our page looks like this. And you can see that everything, the bullets are kind of sitting on top of the other elements. And I don't see that background color for my um, main div. Basically, the div immediately snapped shut because if I have elements that are floated inside of it, the floated elements aren't going to hold the div open. The div basically, essentially, thinks that it has no content and it encloses everything because it has no height. So we just see the borders right here. So to fix this, we're going to go ahead and we're going to um, add a float left onto our nav container. So I'm going to come back here to my nav container and we'll go ahead and we'll specify a float of left. And let's just save and refresh the page. And now you can see I get my background color that's around my nav container div. That basically allowed us to um, show those things. And the next thing I want to do is I want to get rid of these bullets because they look pretty horrible. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the nav container li and we'll go ahead and we'll use our list style type to remove the bullets by specifying that that be set to none. So if we refresh our page now, we can see that it looks like this. So that's looking much better. Obviously we still have some issues, so we'll go ahead and adjust those as we continue on right here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set some styles for my links right now. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to copy the beginning of this style. We'll change this to nav container A. So I want to style all A links. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the line. So we'll set the text decoration to none. And let's also go ahead and um, let's add a color to the text. We'll use that same kind of darker blue that we're using on the borders, this 069. And then let's go ahead and let's set a new um, style for the hover state. So we'll change this to hover. And on the hover, we'll just change the color of the text to a darker gray. And we'll get rid of this text decoration because we don't need that. That will just inherit. So if I save and refresh now, you can see that now I've changed the look of the links right there. And that's exactly what I wanted to do. So now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and we want to get some separation between the list items. So we'll go ahead and we'll add some adjustments to our we can do this on the LI, so I'm going to come to my LI right here, and we'll add some padding, and I'll go ahead and use the shortcut method by specifying zero and then just six pixels, and that's going to set the top and bottom to zero, and the left and right, of course, to six. And let's go ahead and add a border to these as well. So we'll add a border right, um, and we'll go ahead and make that solid one pixel and I'll go ahead and use my same blue that I'm already using on my page. So if we save and refresh now you can see that we've spread these things out and I must have not spelled my border right. Oh I have a comma right here because that should have shown up. <laughs> Let's test that again. There we go. And this is wrapping because my page isn't quite wide enough. So as soon as I make my page wide enough, that's going to fix that up. Normally, no one's going to be viewing their browser this thin, so I'm not going to worry about that. So now you can see that I've created what looks more like kind of a button type of effect. Um, and having the border on the right kind of creates these dividing lines. My only problem is I would like to have a border on this first element as well. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to use the first child selector um, to go ahead and create that. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this and we'll paste this down here. And then 
I'm going to go ahead and change this to say nav container li colon first dash child. Using this first child basically is going to take the first child of any list item and only apply the style to that particular element. So that can be extremely helpful when you're trying to create something like this where you know you don't want to apply that border on the left to any of the other um, list items but you only want it to apply to the one that is the very first one. So first child allows me to do that and now I have a border right there. So this is starting to look pretty good. Our list is coming together, our horizontal menu list is coming together fairly well. We'll go ahead and we're going to, let me just temporarily actually turn on a background color on my A's because I want to point something out to you very quickly. So let's just go into the style that we've already established here for our A and I'm gonna go ahead and set my background color and we'll just like pick a red or something like that so it shows up. So if I save and I refresh you can see where the actual links are. So the links don't extend to the edge of what is going to be our buttons right here. Um, and the reason why is because remember how we added padding, a six pixel padding to the list, but not necessarily to the A. So I would like that to be part of my link. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually remove the padding of six pixels on the left and the right of the list item and I'm going to add that in to my rule that I've already established for my A. And if I save and refresh the page now, you can see that now that whole area becomes red. And if even if I click over here, I get the pointer finger indicating that that is actually part of my link. So that's definitely a helpful little technique. Um, now the link is going to fill the entire list item. So that can certainly be helpful. So let's go ahead and let's change, we'll get rid of that red because we don't need that anymore. I was just using that to be able to show you what was happening visually. We're going to go ahead and now what we want to do is we'd like to, when the user is going to hover over these different menu items, instead of just changing the actual link itself, I'd like the background color to go ahead and change too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, a L. I'm going to use a hover state on my list item. So let's come up here and we'll go ahead and use our nav container. Open, close our curly braces, and in here I'm going to create a new rule for my li colon hover, and I'm going to set the background color. And we'll just set the background color to white. So basically, if we go ahead and save this and refresh, I've added the pseudo class of hover to the list items. And this really works fantastically here. Unfortunately, um, this is going to work in just about all new generation browsers. However, this will, the um, IE6 on PC does not recognize the LI on anything except for an A tag. So there is a workaround that you can use, a hack to get IE6 to recognize this, but we'll be discussing that later on in the course when we discover um, hacks. This will work in IE7, and then of course it works in you know all of the more compliant browsers like Firefox, Opera, Netscape, um, Safari if you're using a Mac, things like that. So do keep this in mind that if you test on IE6, it's not going to respond to the hover on the LI. But there is a workaround and we'll just be discussing that a little bit later on. So the next part is to build our dropdown. So we don't actually have to do anything else. We're pretty much done here. Um, you can see that this is a little bit different from what we did before because we styled it differently. And then the technique that we used is a little more complex, not too much, but we did go ahead and introduce first child so we could create that little line right here. And we created some more styles that were on the list items themselves. We'll go ahead and we'll save this file and then in part two of this exercise we'll create the drop down menus.